And I know there was this like, it was before I joined big, but there was this guy who he created a video portfolio on YouTube. And, uh, uh, yeah, to, to apply to yeah. big, right? Applied to big and it kind I of went that. Yeah. Subscribe to Bless Dark for your dose of art, architecture and design and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. So hey guys, welcome back to Bless Dark. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Portfolio Review. This is episode three. So two episodes have gone by. You guys have shown so much interest in the series. We had to do another episode. And today is another very, very special episode. Today we have with us Oliver Thomas. But before we get into a conversation with him, let me tell you a little bit about him. Oliver Thomas today is a senior design technology specialist at Bjarke Engels Group. He has had a lot of industry experience even before joining Big. He earlier worked as a facade consultant with Front Inc, where he learned everything about bringing complex and interesting facades to life. He joined Big in 2018 first as a BIM specialist and slowly worked up the ranks. Oli has had a lot of experience, especially when it comes to various softwares and their application in the field. So let's start episode 3 of Portfolio Review with Oliver Thomas. So hey Oli, it is uh, so great to have you back on my channel. For those who do not know, I've had him before and if you've not watched that interview, you really should. But thank you so much for coming back. Awesome. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited for this one. And uh, it's been great to see your channel continue to grow since we last spoke. So before we start our review, before we get into, you know, the portfolios. Okay, one special announcement today. Today we don't have three like the general three portfolios. We have five portfolios today, but they were all so amazing. I just couldn't narrow it down to three anymore. So we'll have to go a little faster on each portfolio, but there's so much to, and their portfolios cover a lot of things. So I think that is why we'll be able to see a lot more in this episode. So there's a lot more to do. So before we get into our portfolios, before we get into the review, I wanted to sort of uh, chat with you about your work and especially about your journey to and through big. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, I, I think, so my role right now, I'm a design technology specialist. So uh, essentially I work with the teams on a day-to-day -day basis. I have like one foot in the teams. I'm helping them with anything from BIM, computation, AR and VR. And then I have my other foot, which is kind of outside the teams the design teams where I'm looking at the office on a kind of office wide basis of like any new tools and technologies that are coming into the office that might be might add to the unique design process a big. And so yeah, I think um, I had an interesting uh, journey to get to get to big I, I worked as a designer for, a, for a, a period of time doing competitions and being in that like early stage uh, phases of projects, then I went to um, become a consultant. So I worked as a facade consultant for a little while. And that's where I really learned about how things are actually built. And I had this kind of more technical knowledge of, of building and working out facade systems. And throughout all that time, I always had an interest in technology. So when I came out of front, I was kind of looking at, I wanted to get back into the architecture world. And I had a few practices in mind that were like, you know, uh, the places I'd love to work. Big was like the top of that list. But I was also torn about, am I, should I go down the architecture path or should I go down like a specialist path? And we live in this era of kind of the specialist at the moment. Every firm has this, um, you know, BIM specialist, computational specialist, design technology specialist. And um, I, I kind of got in touch with some people I applied at Big. I'd also applied a number of times before I joined Big. So like for anyone that's listening out there, just because you've applied once doesn't mean that's it. Um, it, it. It was, you know, throughout my career, I'd applied to big in different in different parts of my career and for different positions. This time, it just seemed like a right the right timing, and I applied for just an open architecture position. Um, I went in for an interview, a very general interview, as uh, just an architect, and then um, shortly after that, I then was in conversation with the people that I had an interview with. And then there was this kind of opportunity to join the BIM team. And I was kind of like, oh, I'm okay, that could be really interesting. Uh, but I was unsure about, you know, every BIM team, for example, and every specialist team in each firm is, is different, right? And I thought, um, 
this could be really interesting if, if, if it's a very broad position in that like I'm dealing with technology in the office. And so I met with uh, Jan, who's the, the director of BIM at, at BIG in New York. I got on with him really well. And then, um, you know, the, the position seemed to be very broad uh, in terms of, well, I was joining the BIM team, but there was scope to kind of expand my role uh, within the firm. And uh, yeah, it just seemed like a great fit. And um, to be honest, I'm, I'm really happy having gone down that path. I get to, to work with the design team and like have one foot in, but I'm also testing and experimenting with new tools. One point I definitely do want to reiterate uh, from Mariana's video is that, um, you know, like I said, I applied to BIG a few times before I actually, you know, got in or got an interview. And just because, um, you know, it, it's just a reflection of that moment and that time. There's so many things that go into actually getting hired at these firms. There's things, timing is a huge one, projects coming and going, uh, how quickly you can start and all these kind of things all play into it. And so um, I definitely wanted to reiterate that point is, if you didn't get into a firm or you didn't get an interview, it's no reflection on, on who you are as an architect. I think um, if you do get hired, then great. Prove them, prove them right that they made the right decision in hiring you. If you didn't get a, an interview or you didn't get hired, prove them wrong and, and go on to do great things and continue to build your work set. And I think that's one of the things that I, I definitely worked on was I just kept adding to my skill set as an architect and it, I felt like I got to a point where my skill set was valuable for, for any firm. Um, and so, you know, it's just a, a constant uh, buildup of your own skill set. So uh, could you also give us like any uh, tips and advices, like if somebody is applying for a job, especially at these bigger firms. So uh, some tips and advice that can help somebody maneuver this time when they're applying. Like I said, there's so many factors that come into this. Um, but, uh, and just to preface this, this kind of like discussion, I'm not, I'm not involved directly with the hiring in the office, but I do see more and more portfolios getting sent to me and, and, uh, particularly within the specialist team, if, if we are ever hiring for specialist positions, I'll be looking at portfolios, but there are a few tips that I have definitely kind of, I would pass on to, uh, fresh graduate graduates. Uh, in addition to what we'll be talking about in terms of like creating a great portfolio. Uh, one of them is of course, like the, the, the business model for architecture firms is project based, right? So the more projects come in, the more people you, you might need and you might need to expand uh, the office. And so one tip I would have is like, if you ever see that a firm has recently won a big competition or, or there's something in the news on, on Dazeen, Art Daily and all these kind of websites. If you see them land a big project, by the time it hits the press, they're probably looking, starting to look for people for that project. So it's not a bad time. If you are gonna send like an unsolicited application, it's probably not a bad time to do that. And you'll notice that firms do hire around the time um, when, when you see projects coming up. So that's one little tip that I definitely put out there. The other thing is networking, of course, is huge. And like, as we were discussing earlier, like I think COVID has amplified along with social media and, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, all these kind of things. It's very easy to connect with people that work at firms you might be interested in. And there's definitely no harm in reaching out to people, introducing yourselves and seeing if you could just make a connection through there. That's always a, a great thing to have. Uh, one thing for, for, to, for me that really helped was going to conferences. I, I went to a conference when I was like two or three years into my, um, as, a, as an architecture assistant, I went to Smart Geometry in 2014 or 15 in, in Hong Kong. And from that conference, I met so many, so many people that I, that have kind of led on to meet other people. And, you know, the architecture world is a small world and the specialist world, like as a computational specialist is a very small world. So if you go to these conferences, you meet a lot of really interesting people. And actually from that conference, I then got the connection to my next job at front and also a connection to, to how I got into big and so or to, to someone who are big. So conferences are a great way to do that. 
And you also learn a bunch of stuff whilst you're there. Um, and finally, my, my last kind of tip is to think about developing and uh, advertising a superpower, right? So with so many people as an architect, you, you know, at university, you spend so much time as a designer, right? And it's very important to have that design skill set. And of course, that's, that's the important thing you're looking for in a portfolio, but also to maybe show that you have some kind of superpower, whether that's like, you're amazing at, at drawing, or you're an amazing, uh, you got this graphical skill set, or computation, BIM, or, or something like that. If you have that little superpower, it's just that extra thing when someone's looking at hiring you. Oh, when you're looking at two portfolios, these are two really great designers, but this one also comes with this little superpower power of they're amazing at visualization in, in some platform. Um, that's, that's one thing I definitely um, advise, and especially when we're talking about technology, you know, I appreciate that coming out of university, you're not going to be a, a, a have a handle on BIM, computation, augmented reality, all this kind of stuff. Gravitate to the one that interests you the most and pursue that. So, and develop yourself a little superpower, um, because I think that goes a long way in, in when people look to hire you. So uh, let's get on to our portfolio review. Let's start this episode three. Now, before we start the interview, I just wanted to let you know that Bless Dark is on Patreon. Once you become a patron, you not only get access to bonus videos, but you will help support Bless Dark and make the community bigger and more connected with people all over the world. So do consider supporting. The link is in the description below. Now, let's start our conversation. So the first portfolio that we are looking at is the portfolio of uh, Nima Mirzajani. I hope I am pronouncing that correct. So one thing also we talked about in the previous episodes is when you're looking through portfolio reviews, I mean, looking at portfolios, when anybody's looking at portfolios, there are two glances, right? There's the one quick glance that you sort of go through the whole portfolio. And then when you look deeper. So when we go through this portfolio and we take a quick glance uh, at the whole thing, what are your thoughts that are going about for this portfolio? Yeah, I think um, you sending them to me was exactly like I would receive them, right? You initially just take a, take a quick glance at it and then you put some time to the side to kind of really digest it, right? So um, flicking through this one, I saw those, uh, it seems to be like a good range of projects uh, nice um, graphical style. I like the, the way that it kind of started. Um, and I think, yeah, he's got an interesting kind of, he's got a graphical st style throughout it. And like certain pro projects piqued my interest and I definitely kind of had them down to kind of go back and delve into. So initially a good, um, a good reaction. This one was, uh, was interesting that he went with the um, portrait uh, portfolio. Yeah. Don't see as much, but um, it's not a bad decision. I guess you can also have them and, and just export it um, as a kind of spread. For that vertical thing, I would just say like currently also when I'm looking at the portfolio, because uh, you know, I think it's primarily because of the medium also I'm seeing it in when I want to see the whole thing together, the portfolio becomes this small because of the vertical aspect of it. So that is why rectangular things just seem better because you can see them at a whole glance and yet see a lot of it all together because the screens are all rectangular. Unless you are Steven from show it better. This, that was the first time on his story. I saw somebody had placed a vertical screen and I was yeah, very yeah. intrigued. There's a few people with the old vertical screen in, uh, in the office actually. So uh, they would be, they would appreciate this for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think going portrait is, is it, I think there has to be a specific reason. Like if you're, I don't know, you're, you're working a lot on high rise buildings and for whatever reason, it just fits on there a little bit better. Um, but of course, I think you should always send your portfolio assuming it's gonna be viewed on screen, right? Let's take a quick second to talk about the cover page. I personally like it. I like how it's represented here. Uh, what are your thoughts? I think it's nice. It's it's simple. You can, you can tell it's customized. There's it maybe there, there could be a little more character being showed, but for me, it's it's kind of nice. It's something unique to him. It sets the tone for the rest of the portfolio, um, and I think it's I think it's nice. It, it does exactly what it needs to do. 
Um, you could maybe develop it a little bit more, but um, I'm I'm okay with it. Okay, so I mean, talking about the CV, I think it's it's clean, it's nice, it has everything on there. Now let's touch on. Of course, this is my uh, my little pet thing is the skills bracket, right? Yeah, and everyone has these skills bracket, and um, I think this is this is nice. It seems to be very dominant on the page. Um, I don't know if it needs to be that that kind of dominant um, unless you really think that's a huge part of your skill set, right? I want to get across that I have this skill set in computational BIM or, or all these tools. But I do appreciate it's very quick to understand because he's kind of using the icons of the actual programs. I do like yeah. that. And uh, we'll definitely get into like this, uh, what, what do you call it? Like the, the kind of rating from zero to 10 graphically on kind of how competent you are in that program. Um, it is a, it's a difficult one. I don't quite know what the answer to it is, but of course, whenever you see this, people always rate themselves uh, maybe a little bit higher than-, than Yeah, I was about to maybe. ask like, do you think it's, it's helpful rating ourselves like that on the, uh, does it help you as somebody looking at the portfolio? It definitely helps to know what tools you've ha you've got a little bit of a grasp of. Okay, I will always read these things with a pinch of salt, right? Yeah. That I okay from this I can see he's a he's probably a Rhino guy. Okay, he's 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 rated himself fairly high in Rhino. I'd say that's like level nine out of ten. Yeah, he's also got a bit of grasshopper going on. He's like a three quarters there, so he must you know that's that is a direct translation would be an advanced level of, of grasshopper. Having said that there, you know, I do also appreciate there is a, a huge gap between using these tools in university and using them in practice. So for me, it's like a, a, a gauge of what they think their skill set is coming out of university. Um, and then, you know, I will kind of dig into that a little bit. Uh, into the portfolio is there anything I can see that's that's given me hints of of the actual level of of uh, software which we do see in some of the other portfolios um, and maybe during an interview I'll, I'll ask him some specific questions related to those tools all right so uh, let's go to our first project that he has put up and I think this is one of the he's put his best foot forward I would just say visually at least uh, yeah. in the very first project. So it's called Forgotten Hopes. Yeah, it's definitely gone in with uh, visual, uh, the visual kind of wow factor. The project is kind of kind of interesting. I remember just skimming through it. I think it's, it's like a pavilion to kind of uh, shock people into what is going on in the world of sustainability around us. And it's these kind of like... Uh, concrete i think they were concrete trees to kind of uh make people think about the environmental impacts that we're having so i kind of like the 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 idea of the project i don't know if the story of it kind of comes across on the pages i think um that's one thing i see as a repeating kind of comment is like what is the story you're trying to tell in in two pages right this project is two pages yeah what is the story you're really quickly just trying to tell me the story through a diagram like he has this exploded diagram here but for me that's that's a bit more of a technical you know we've got like exterior circulation waffle structure interior circulation it's like a you know a technical program um breakdown i maybe want to just hear the story yeah of, of the project really quickly and that uh, that concept diagram is a great way to do that and obviously you know, big, we're, we're well known for quickly getting across our story in these simple diagrams. And I think that's, that's something that's a really nice tool to use in your own way to quickly tell the story. Because uh, if I'm putting my designer hat on, I want to know what your thinking is behind this. What is the story and what is the project? Here, I think just the, the very first render that we see on the first page. I think that's a very powerful render, but again, yeah. I think it translates well when it's horizontal. I don't know if it'll translate as well if it's vertical because your view angle become becomes yeah. even narrower. Yeah, no, I think I do like the kind of, whenever you start a project, I think either with, you know, an icon 
or a, a uh, your killer kind of image, your wow image, that's always a great way to start and you get a flavor for the project. And then you can go into, you know, page two of that project. And that's where you get across the, you know, the story, the diagram sequence or whatever that initial kind of, uh, you get that storytelling uh, ball rolling. Actually, this one, I, I did read through this and I was kind of, it's like a parking, I, I'm still a little bit unclear exactly what it is. It's like a parking structure, but there's also some like, mixed use stuff going on. Yeah. Um, I think the second page is graphically much really better well, than the, yeah. Yeah, really I was well about to say that, like th this, if, I know there is a lot of things happening, like a lot of things that are done diagrammatically to explain it as well. But I somehow think this could still be your, the very first thing that we see about the project yeah. because it's much better think, graphically. Yeah, and he's, I feel like you're, you're almost telling like the diagrams and annotation you have, I don't think it's connected so much with the story, like the sun path, is that a critical part of the story? Maybe if you tweak those to try and get that story across and you've got your wow image and your your kind of story in one image, that's pretty cool. And that's, that's a nice way to start off things. Um, I also like this and another one in his portfolio, I, I just want to touch on because I think I, I think this shows the power of YouTube because I feel like I've seen a couple of tutorials of exactly this and you start to see it in portfolios. I think not that that's a problem, but um, I think it shows the power of, of like how YouTube is kind of getting into everybody's education. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. Yeah. Uh, some of these videos are really influencing globally, which is amazing. True. I mean, uh, I mean, all three channels that you mentioned are key hacks. Uh, show it better and upstairs are really amazing and if you guys have not seen those channels what are you doing like go look through them I think uh, a lot of times you get stuck in your college itself in your school itself within the people uh, that you see every day and they become sort of your uh, I mean there's always a healthy competition in the school right and sort of the benchmark of what good things are and what all is out there becomes then within those people only but when you you know spread outside when you look outside and you can see and you can get inspired you can bring all of that in so i think that is really great for everybody to do. the the next projects the um vanak tower if i've pronounced that correctly this yeah. was actually the projects that piqued my interest that's the one where i was like okay i'm i'm, I'm kind of a little bit more engaged with this one also one one other tip for all portfolios i think i i I remember is it'd be good to know where you did this. Was this a university project? Because the first project was um, like a, a round pavilion at the Dubai Expo. Mm -hmm. Was that something they did at school? Was that a competition he did on his own or with, yeah. with some friends? Was that for the company that he was interning with? So that's really good to know. If that was his own uh, proposal, then that's that's very different to him working on it uh, as part of a practice. It shows that he's like taking the initiative to, to develop this and, and enter a competition. So um, that that's an important one to also have. But this Vanak Tower, I think we've got a story or like at least we've got an idea of the, you know, how he got to this form. It's not just a kind of form finding thing. There's, there's at least his intended logic behind it. We don't have that kind of wow full spread image yeah. but we do have a kind of nicely uh, a very kind of photoshoppy graphic -y style so this page is kind of you know it's it's also i can get my hands into some some uh architecture we've got some like you know he's getting into the world of of high-rise design next page we've got like some nice diagrams just breaking that down he's he's got some plans which i can see are great i was just i was trying to zoom into them and understand uh, what is this kind of in-between space? Because um, either the floor plate's incredibly small and he's not put furniture on the exterior portion. But but anyway, you can see he's kind of getting into the technicality of, of how a core works and all that kind of stuff, yeah. which is great. Now, this is where I'm assuming he's using tools like uh, Grasshopper to do this, but I don't know. So it would be nice to see somewhere here that he's using... Rhino and Grasshopper, or maybe even a snippet 
of the, the script and a, a, like a raw screenshot of it in Rhino and Grasshopper. That goes a long way. And I know, you know, particularly as coming out of university, everything you think it's like, and even when you're, when you're in practice and, and like, I'm guilty of this as well, it's like the portfolio is this amazing polished thing of finished renders and diagrams and things like that. But actually people sometimes want to see behind the scenes of the tools you use, like a, a raw screenshot that's maybe a little bit photoshopped of, of your model or like of the script uh, that you're using. Uh, it, someone does it in one of the portfolios and uh, I'll explain why that's, that's useful. But maybe a section like a behind the scenes section for each, for each page would be a really interesting little addition to, to portfolios. I would say it, that's a great that's a great point, and maybe you there's an opportunity to connect the plans with the diagram through some color color coding. That's a great point. But here's what's interesting is like he's created some kind of logic for this, um, which is kind of you know this is the beginning of of your script. He's he's like laying out the parameters for this. We've come to the end of the portfolio. Um... So just quickly, like if there would be any advice that you would have for Nima for the portfolio. Yeah, I think it would be good to show a little bit more on the behind the scenes, not all polished images. Um, the one thing I, I'm missing, so he's got a language throughout all of it, but each project, I feel like he's experimenting with something new, um, which is also okay, but it's, it's nice to have a uh, a portfolio that has a consistent language in the images and the diagrams and things like that. Um, so that would be my my two kind of points. And again, like see a little bit behind the scenes of what's actually going on. I, I like that you use, you had your kind of skill set, your technology skill set um, on the CV, but I'm not seeing it translated into the projects, like what, what tools are you using for each project? All right. So uh, before we go ahead to the next portfolio, uh, we'd also, I'd like put up a story on Instagram for anybody who wanted to ask you questions as well. And so there was one of the questions that I remember, and I just uh, wanted to ask you that, and it's not something very specific that, but that person was asking, what is your thought on uh, video portfolios? Ooh, video portfolios. Um, interesting. Like, do you mean, like a, a video of yourself, like uh, talking to the camera kind of thing. I um, think, uh, I mean, if given an option between you talking to the camera and the other being like a trailer for your projects kind of things, yeah. I think that would be so, much cooler. So I, I actually, I'm a big fan of, of just doing it, right? Um, I think that's a great idea. And I'm, I'm seeing that architects are evolving in the way that we communicate, right? We communicate through images and exactly like this, slides of PDFs and things like that. But now, you know, and again, this ties into this world of YouTube as well as we're now evolving to communicate by video. It's so much more engaging if I was to create a video about a project that I did and explain it. It's so much more engaging. And I know there was this like, it was before I joined Big, but there was this guy who, he created a video portfolio on YouTube. And, uh, uh, yeah, to to apply to yeah. big, right? Apply to big, and it kind I of remember that. Yeah, and I think it's a great, you know, it's stuff like that. Just, just, just do it. And um, there's ways around uh, how you can do it. Like I think breaking the rules is fine. Like little things like that. Some companies don't allow you. To, you know, you can only send a portfolio, uh, a PDF, or something like that. But that doesn't mean you can't put a QR code on your portfolio. You can't put a link in there somewhere if, if you're able like to Like imagine it. if you open that portfolio and the only thing on that portfolio is that QR code. Like if somebody's really interested, like they might someone want someone just sent a portfolio with a QR code. I'm scanning the QR code. Like yeah. what is it? <laughs> Maybe I'll get like all my information hacked or something like that. But you're gonna you're gonna tempt someone, right? So I think and it would show they're thinking outside the box. It's getting creative with technology as well. So yeah, I think it's a cool way to, to make your portfolio stand out for sure. I definitely wouldn't have any problems with it. I think it also would be very personal. If it's also you talking to the camera straight away, you're bridging that world between, is this an interview? I'm like face to face with this person now. You get that character. Like a lot of the interview is about um, 
understanding who you are, the character of who you are, is your personality going to fit into the firm and, and those kind of things. So um, yeah, I would say go for it. The guy who did the video, I think he did get hired in, yeah. in COVID. Don't quote me on this, but I think he got hired or he at least was, you know, contacted. By got in touch with, yeah, yeah. I heard it, his video went viral and uh, then there, then there were discussions going on, like some discussion at least going on. He got in touch with the firm. I don't, yeah, I'll have to look him, look his name up and I'll look if he's still... I could try, like try and talk to him and I can see if yeah, like, that he still works. Yeah, and getting him on the it channel. Like he... afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to our second portfolio for the day, which is uh, Khaled Omara's portfolio. So yeah, this straight off the bat, like my my reaction says flicking through. I mean, this is a, this guy is super talented. He's, um, he's got a great graphical style. You can see he's a very gifted um, artist in terms of like sketching and he, he maybe comes from that kind of background or he's just uh, very talented like that. I worked with a guy at university who this guy really reminded me of. Very, um, very creative, very like uh, talented. So yeah, I mean, flicking through the portfolio, uh, initial glances, there's a lot in there. Some really nice visuals. It's definitely like, okay, this guy's, this guy's got, um, he's got, he's, he's, he's a talented guy in terms of design. Cover page, very simple. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not getting too much from it, but he's, he's starting off his graphical style with this font. And so he's setting the tone. Yeah. Um, the, the, the cover, I think it is a missed opportunity to maybe get something across here, like a little bit more, um, but it's a very strong portfolio graphically and visually. So he, he, he makes up for that uh, elsewhere in the portfolio, but maybe a missed opportunity to create a, a more of an icon or a flavor of, of what's going on. We got his CV in here. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of nicely laid out. It was interesting. Everyone had a photo in there um cv yes i've never put a photo in mine you uh, haven't but never no and um this is one thing yeah. we were talking like in the last two episodes as well is whether to and like both of them were of the opinion like to have a, a photo because it helps humanize you more like when we can look at you yeah equally i don't know if if um a lot of firms might omit omit it so you're looking at a blank portfolio with no one's name because so that you can just completely judge it uh on what it is i don't know if that's the case that, that firms do that but i think it is a nice approach right it adds that personal touch i've i've never done it personally maybe i should be doing it um <laughs> but yeah it does have a nice nice personal touch to it um the cv is actually not super easy to read just because like the stuff i'm interested in is like smaller on the side but sure. it's it's still you know uh he's got he's got basic information his experience but then again we have uh the competencies and again this is another way to do it he's kind of listed out the softwares that he knows and then he's got a he's gone out of five right and this is the first guy where we have maximum com competency uh competence in rhino yeah. t which you can definitely see in his work. He's, he's been spending a lot of time in there. If, if you're going to go maxed out level skill set on, on tools, it's a big statement. But I also, you know, it comes with a pinch of salt. I know this is straight out of university. You're probably a, a wizard on Rhino and T-Spines. And T-Spines, you can see he's, he's doing a lot of it in his work or assume it, that's, what, that's what he's doing. Yeah. And But equally, I think it's a big thing, you know, if you're, if you're that level of rhino, you, you're ready to come and teach a class in, in the office straight away. Like, Still, I don't know if I'll be ever comfortable putting like a maximum on any software or any skill ever. Like if at max, I can put it at 90%, like all, <laughs> almost there, but I would never put anything like all the way there. Just because it's it's maxed out, I, I'd want to ask him some stuff to, to like get a grasp of what he thinks uh, that level is. Index page is nice. Yeah. I think this shows he's obviously very talented drawing beautiful, beautiful sketches. Index is nice. Um, he's got kind of what year he did the products in a little bit of information behind each one. I won't go too in depth into it. Getting into the projects. Yes. Boom. The first one. Yeah. Killer image. Really nice. Um, 
you know, obviously great visualization skills, great photoshopping skills. It's a nice, I like that it's black and white actually, and then the project comes to life afterwards. It's a nice little kind of setup. Uh, he's got the project name. You know, I think that, that's a nice kind of initial page. Um, the second page is kind of, okay, we're, we're now uh, getting into the project a little bit. He's telling the story of the project. It's not super clear. I had to like zoom into uh, this stuff to kind of understand it. And, um, you know, the work, he's, he's very talented and like the design itself is a little bit hard to kind of understand because it's very complicated freeform geometry. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'll touch on that a little bit later with some of the other stuff. But, uh, you know, he's, he's telling the story of the project. Uh, I'm getting the kind of, you know, there's little uh, lines of what the project is about, which I'm, I'm enjoying. Um, the close-up shots, I'm not quite sure, you know, uh, they're just highlighting on, on this kind of complex geometry. Mm -hmm. This stuff must have taken a while to, to, <laughs> to model. Um, I would just say for the image, like the, the colored one on the left hand side, for some reason, this just reminds me of like a, uh, architectural digest or like a domus cover page. You're right. Yeah. I don't know if it's the combination of the font and the, the image, you know, as, as you get through the project as well. And in the next page, he's got a lot of, it's, it's all beautiful drawings beautiful sections and plans and stuff like that but there's a lot on there and it, it, yeah. it was I really had to get into it to like you know break down what is going on and like what diagram is referring to what thing let's jump into the design a little bit like this is a, a complex project and he's really like there's some serious time put into the plans uh, I have to give him credit like there's a lot of work that's that's going into this um, to this project and this style of architecture I think people think is very computational um, but I would hedge a bet that that he's not used any computation on it like this is all manually modeled through Rhino and T-splines and things like mm -hmm. that and and this is one of the things like people may think this is what computation is about but um, I, I would say this is probably all completely manual. And the reason why it's associated with, with computation is computation has allowed us to create extravagant forms True. and also allowed us to build them. But of course, the question is then, should we be, should we be creating these crazy forms? Like what, what is the justification of it? Um, and you know, not, not to kind of jump into that on, on his portfolio. I think um, it's amazing work, but I think, you know, people will think this might be very computational BIM driven. I would hedge a bit. I love for him to reach out and just explain a little bit of a process. And again, I can't tell that through the portfolio at, at the moment, like what tools is he using on each project um, to do this? Uh, I can kind of guess, of course, from, from the CV, but it would be nice to also see behind the scenes as well. Um, but yeah, I think the project, like the graphical style goes through. We got the space expo. Again, it's kind of a similar, um, this one's a little more balanced out. I feel the, the kind of initial page is, is more breathing space. The, the next page of the plan and the section, beautiful drawing. Uh, yeah. Again, it takes you a couple seconds to look at and realize what's actually going on. Um, I think one little, little criticism is kind of maybe to, to ha hatch out the, the cut mark or like make the walls solid so that you can actually read what is being cut through. You can, you can just about read it, but it would maybe help uh, as he's done in the section, the actual, what, what he's cut through is in dark gray. That would be kind of useful in the plans, but, and Hey, he's kind of, you know, this, <laughs> this is the thing with these like freeform projects and every architect I feel has gone through this. I myself have gone through this period of like playing around with, with like very complex geometry and freeform geometry. Uh, I was a 3D Max guy when I first like was at university and you kind of create the shapes and then you have to make like make them work. And yeah, <laughs> it's, oh man, it's, it's painful. So I, I appreciate it. It's quite, you know, it's well done. I can see there's some, you know, 
decent level of detail to this plan. There's some really decent level of detail to this plan. So all credit to him for that. Um, that one called Interior Spaces is a beautiful page. It's kind of very uh, desert looking scene of this building. It's for a, a second, of... I thought the this is another project that started after. Wait, all ah. of this is one project? Like all the, oh, now I realize it. Yeah, and honestly, I'm still, I'm still piecing it together. Yeah, it's still, you've got the observation. He's got this huge project and then he's like. So he's detailed out each and every one element for us. Which is, I mean, it's incredible. There's there's so much work that has gone into this. True, true, true. This is just blown up much more than I had imagined. (laughs) I think it's, it's a, it's a beautiful portfolio. We go to other products, this leap. Uh, project is a little more smaller scale you know I think I I will say a couple things about this in terms of putting my tech hat on you know some of the tools and technologies has enabled us as architects to create these kind of forms very quickly and very easily through you know Rhino, T-Spines and Maya and some other kind of of these um, more animation based programs or programs that came from the film industry but it's you it's a very difficult it's just for me it's winding the gap between uh university and practice you see like i'd be really interested to see this guy go into practice and and see how he can translate this into the real world um because it's the the more complex the geometry gets the more embodied energy goes into building it the complexity of building these things which is fine if you ha- if you're going to go down that path, that's fine. But you also have to back it up with how to actually build this thing, sure. and especially in the world we live in now, like we, you know, we have a global warming crisis. the The world, our population is increasing. We need to build faster. We need to build more sustainably, and we need to build smarter. And then when you look at uh, architects, we're over in the corner making these crazy buildings and um you know that's that's going to be an aspect to it but i think um you know this portfolio he's he's really shown he's talented with uh with his grasp of what i think is um rhino sub d and t spines and i, I would just a- say uh, like when you switch from the first project to the second uh there is a difference in in his style of representation that goes suddenly from pages that are filled and for some reason i i i i i think the font is different i don't know i am a big i just keep looking at fonts of people and as you come to the second project i feel like this is um, another thing that started all together like it doesn't look cohesive with the last one it's a slight change it's almost like he's he's got a bit more breathing room on the pages which is actually quite nice in this product i think maybe just because it's not as complex he's not trying to show so much um you know tr- he's not trying to show every single aspect of the project because the project is a lot smaller and and the programs is a little bit simpler True. um but it actually works quite well uh in that like it's a bit more of a breathing room i can kind of read the project a little bit there's a, the, I think the last page of that project is really nice, this kind of floating uh, thing in the water. Dude, how is this, Zaha should be ringing him right now, like trying to trying to hire this guy. Like this is a perfect, like is there a more perfect portfolio for, for like someone applying to Zaha? Coming to the end of this portfolio, any advice that you would have for him? I think, uh, look, it's, it's a really nice portfolio. Um, again, I'm touching at, at specific things, but give yourselves a bit of breathing space um you don't have to get every single thing across on a on a project although i know and again i'm guilty of this is like you know you've spent so much time thinking through these things you want to show everything but also you don't want to overcrowd um the pages and some of this i did find it hard to like uh get the actual idea of the project for each one of these little areas for each one of these sub projects here the overall story and like what each diagram was actually referring to. And I think you could maybe omit some of them and give yourself a bit of breathing space. Um, also, again, repeating comment, it would be nice to see some behind the scenes work. Like, 
you know, a raw shot of the Rhino model or some kind of indication of the tools you actually use to do this. I know you've got some sketches in there, but I think they're great. It'd be nice to see them on the project pages as well. A little bit of behind the scenes uh, would be nice. So that would be my two comments. Like, give yourself a bit of breathing space on the pages. I'd be nice to see um, a bit of uh, the kind of behind the scenes um, work of, of how you got here. Okay, here is one simple question. I mean, obviously, it's from somebody who who is uh, very young, maybe first, second year, and somebody is asking, you know, when you have a lot of thought behind your design process and you've done uh, your design process diligently, but you do not have enough visual representation to back it up, uh, what would be your advice in that scenario? I mean, what we do as architects is just as much about design, like the spending the, the time coming up with our designs and coming up with ideas is just as important as communicating them. So you have to have that both sides of that coin. Um, so, you know, my advice was, is, is to kind of focus on that as something that you need to work on, develop us, whether she's talking about a visualization skill set or a diagram skill set or something like that, it is a key part of what we do. Um, otherwise, I think in one of the portfolios, this like sketchy, uh, like diagrammatic idea of like drawing on top, quickly drawing on top of visuals and diagrams like that, it, that can actually be a really quick way to tell the story of a project. So combining I guess you'd call it the analog and the digital of like drawing and sketching with digital image. That's a very, that might kind of bridge the gap for them initially. But yeah, I think communication is just as important as the actual design. You could spend, you could design the greatest thing ever, uh, but if you can't present it and you can't get that across through your presentation or your video or whatever it is, your portfolio, then um, you know they're not going to get that. So you want to be able, you want to weight it just as importantly as the design itself. So it's definitely something I would invest time into. And again, there's great YouTube channels where you can go and quickly yeah. learn these things as well. All right, perfect. Let's go into our third portfolio. Let's call Kudos. him KDB. KDB. Okay. Crush KDB. You, this sounds yeah, like so, KGB for some reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, KDB. Uh, I would just say before we start this folio, one of the main reasons I selected the portfolio was just the cover page. Like this was one of the deciding. I personally love it. I like it a lot. I love this small little image here. And this was one of the main reasons. Uh, obviously, the portfolio is great, but this was one of the pushing factors of like, uh, getting this into this episode. All right, coming to your initial thoughts. So yeah, initial thoughts. I actually find it kind of interesting. Like the cover, he's using um, someone else's work. That's 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 like a an artist, right? And I think at the end, he's referencing uh, credits to it or some something like that. So I found it. It's it's kind of nice. It's obviously visually, and he's got a nice like. Uh, uh, I, I did know not you... know it was somebody else's work. I am just hurt now. Oh, yeah, because at the end, I just caught it before I was talking to, to you. Um, this is like a Kandinsky uh, painting. He's got cover yeah. copyright. I read that. Like, so that I wasn't quite like, I, I'm not quite sure how that fits in with his narrative. I would probably not advise not to do that. You want to do something, you're a designer, so you want to do something initially to get your own design uh, aesthetics and your design approach across. And a nice little logo or something like that is a great way to do that. Um, so yeah, that was my kind of first initial question. Um, on first glance, like the portfolio, just flicking through, I'm seeing a range of stuff. There's loads of things that would make me stop and pause. So there's a good amount of projects in there. Let's jump into the CV thing. It's a clear, Clear CV, we've got, you know, education. He's got a ex bit of experience at, uh, I think Mercedes, he was like working for Mercedes Benz. He's gone to every workshop I think is possible in uh, <laughs> over the last year, which is great. Because what I'm seeing here is, okay, the skill set thing we'll, we'll get into in a, in a little bit, but 
I see that he's interested in this and an interest and a passion for, and again, I'm putting on my kind of tech hat, an interest and a passion for BIM computation, these kind of things is what is the most important thing because, you know, I can, we can teach people stuff, but if they're not interested in it, then you can only teach people so much, right? Oh. So this guy is going out of his way to go to these conferences. He's got, he's been to every design next uh, shout out to uh, uh, Mike and, and those guys uh, with Design Next. And then we've got Index Page, I, I think is nice. He's got, he's got some elements in his, like, you know, an index of the projects. He's got a little icon, a little image to, to show them. Yeah. The year that it was on, the name, and also the tools that he used to actually create it, which is a nice touch. Um, yeah, that, that was one, at least I know what tools uh, he's actually using to, to do this. First project, this was my own little bugbear of like, you know, this guy's interested in, in computation and architecture and stuff. First image I see is just some blobby thing. Uh, that's like, you know, I get, I get it. You probably made it possibly on one of those workshops and there's, there's some fun things going on here, but this doesn't pique my interest as a, if you're applying uh, in practice, right? Because unfortunately this is what people think computation is. It's about making crazy geometry. And that's really the tip of the iceberg. Um, I think, you know, it, it, it's computation can help us in a number of ways. Form finding is really just the beginning. It's like saying, um, I'm only going to write an essay in word if it's about sci-fi, you know, like <laughs> that <laughs> you can use, um, you know, a huge part of computation is, is actually optimizing your design so it can be built, sure. um, rationalizing it or reacting it to real world data and things like that. So it can be used in many different ways and the stigma that comes with computation. And even if you say the word grasshopper, still people are like, whoa, whoa, whoa I don't want my project to, turn into something crazy. This is like yeah. a simple project. I was like, yeah, that's a lot of it can also be about just making yourself more efficient as an architect, right? I don't need to spend an hour placing a thousand trees around my site when I can do it in two minutes with a script, right? So I, I do acknowledge there's some interesting stuff going on in this project, but for me, that's not, um, that's not my first kickoff project. This is like a fun side thing yeah, I mean, did. this project is just about exploration. Mm. And I, I don't know if this should be the first one in that case, if it's just mm. exploration. Because if it's an architectural portfolio, you want to sort of put forward maybe something else and not just uh, uh, explorations of forms and geometries, which are also interesting. But I'm not sure if, if they should come first. Yeah, no, that, that was definitely my thought as well. And then, um, especially as you get to the second project, also yeah. the layout is quite nice. He's, he's, you know, given him shows a bit of maturity and he's got like some breathing space on his pages. He's got a consistent graphical style, but the next product does start to pique my interest. It's, it's a, you know, he's, you're landing on this kind of, uh, this, this kind of wow factor image. In fact, I didn't realize that the building in the background behind the, the kind of marble colored thing, the, the sculpture, it is also the project that didn't an initially stand out to me that they're both the same thing. Like it's, it's one project. Um, but yeah, we see it's, it's a kind of, uh, you know, we've got a site, we've got a story going on in terms of the form hmm. and then yeah. it does get interesting. He's using um, some real world data from the site to actually map or uh, create this form that he's optimizing for, uh, solar heat gain, I think there's also, was it all solar heat gain? I thought there was also some energy uh, view optimization. I might be wrong there. But yeah, he's, and this is a, gr a really cool thing to see that he's using these tools to create informed form finding to help uh, create a more efficient building. Okay. I, and, you know, I'm not going to plug too much about whether the form at the end was, was correct and things like that. But I can see he's really using some some computation to do this. Again, yeah. it would be nice to see um, maybe a snippet of the script or a raw image just so I can connect. I'm sure he's using 
ladybug and honeybee to to do this um but maybe something to just confirm that he is do, using it i see um yeah because he's saying he's using grasshopper rhinoceros twin motion and mega scan so yeah it would be nice to see like peek under the hood of what's actually being used here yeah but uh i think there's some nice things in this product it's laid out quite well there, there is a fair bit of text and I think maybe you could get across some of the ideas through just a diagram or an image, but um, this, this product was, you know, way more interesting than the kind of initial uh, form finding experiment that he had. So this will be my kind of already trumped that project. The fifth and the sixth project, I think uh, also show, I mean, then we come to more, I think, buildable projects where he's done drawings where you can see uh, that he can do working drawings and stuff as well. So I think yeah, it shows he has experience actually documenting some stuff. Um, one, uh, I'm, I'm terrible at, at spelling, but I think he's, he works for Mercedes or he works for a Mercedes things, but he's, I think he's got a wrong spelling from Mercedes in there. Yeah, it, it should be a C. I'm, I'm terrible at it and I've got spelling mistakes in my portfolio, but it's one thing Same. people always tell me, uh, look out for spelling mistakes. So I'm people complete... point out in my videos and my Instagram posts, like this is spelled wrong. I tell yeah. them if, if you ever find a post to find where at least something is not spelled wrong, please know the account has been hacked. Yeah. And yeah, I'm a complete hypocrite for calling this out, but just because it was a type, like a brand like that, you know, just be careful and and, and uh, make sure you spell check these things. And yeah, and I think he finishes on this kind of experimental parametric -y ring kind of thing. That's yeah. where I would put that first project is, is kind of, this True. is my more experimental stuff. This is what I do maybe in my spare time. Yeah, I mean, Very coming up at the end. So like when this ring thing comes up at the end. So when you've gone through uh, the projects and then you've gone through your working drawing projects and you... So, it, and then this something experimental comes up where you sort of working with geometry as well. So it ends on a high note. You go yeah. through those motions and it ends on a high note. So I think yeah, again. That's, that's a great point. Uh, you like start off a high point and end off in like a high point. That's a great yeah. point. What I read that is he's actually helping to I mean, code. Yeah, the program. Right? Yeah, and also Enscape. So that is what I was sort of thinking. So we've come to the end of the portfolio. So any overall advice for the portfolio that you would have? I think yeah, just rethinking the projects sequences. Um, I'd love to, with all the projects, I just want to see the storyline behind it a bit stronger. I'm really having to fish for the storyline. Um, and again, reoccurring uh, advice is just to show a little bit behind the scenes of what you're actually using uh, uh, that's going on. He has done that to a degree. Actually, I have to give him credit because I'm seeing like screenshots from the solo analysis and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think um, that would be my advice. Uh, let's go to the next portfolio, which is uh, Heba's portfolio. So this portfolio, like one thing that I would just say about this portfolio, and I think we'll, we'll go over this portfolio a bit quicker than the others, is because this portfolio in its entirety, if I'm not wrong, is about uh, playing with forms, is about uh, experimentations with forms. We don't see a lot of plans. We don't see uh, the details going into anything. It's just geometries, it's forms. I think what we were talking about, the last part where he was playing with forms, her whole portfolio is about that, which also yeah. speaks to, I think, what she wants to do as well. Yeah, no, I think you're, you're exactly right. And, and we'll, we'll get to that. I think there's a lot of, again, this is what people think computation, computational designers are and computational tools do. Um, but unfortunately, it's, it's, it's also a big stigma that we're fighting against because when you want to deploy these tools on real world products, they think your product is just going to quickly turn into some blob or <laughs> some computational kind of form. So this, this portfolio, I think it's a nice, you know, there's a graphical style. I think graphically she's got a, I feel like it's, there's just a little bit more maturity to come through, but she's on the right path in terms of a graphical style. 
I found it kind of interesting that she started it off with a quote and a, like her own kind of outlook on uh, her design philosophy and her journey as she refers to it. I think that's nice. It's got a personal touch to it. Uh, I'm sure I'll buy it. CV, nice, uh, very kind of nicely laid out. I've got everything, all the kind of information. Again, we have our software skills. I think she maxed out on Auto, AutoCAD, but um, you know, see she's using Rhino, Grasshopper, she's got a Revit skill set. Again, like I said before, I'd take these with a pinch of salt, but I see an, a movement towards something, um, an interest in, in, this, in this area. Uh, she also went to IAC summer course as well. She's doing some workshops as well. Again, master in course in parametric design, uh, complexity parametricized 3.0. So again, shows me she's going out of her way to, um, to you know, pursue this interest. She's an engineer, but then also done a master's in parametric design. Interesting, interesting. Um, so yeah, CV, I don't think we'll uh, dwell on that too much, but yeah, it's, it's nice. And then as you get into the portfolio, and she's one of the only ones, I think, that's actually, it's a little bit faintly done in the corner, but she's saying what, uh, what software she's using and what plugins she uses. So bonus points yeah. for that, because I can then directly connect with, with what she's using. But as we get into this project, and the first two pages are interesting, there's like you know, some kind of the second page, there's some kind of uh, matrix of, of different options she's kind of going through. But then we just get into polished images of this thing, right? And then the same with the encoded fields. There's not a lot of stuff to sink my teeth into. These are, it, uh, these are really beautiful images. I actually got mesmerized by page 24 and 25. I just like, I think... <laughs> I think I just stared at this one for a little while. It's like the colors are amazing, beautiful image. Um, you know, I get it from a artistic point of view. Yeah. But um, putting my architecture hat on, it's not until the third project, which is called Phalanx or something like that. Um, yeah, where from, you see like a glimpse of an yeah, architectural now, element to those geometries. Yeah. So up, up until this point, this could be a graphic design portfolio. This could be an art, like someone's art portfolio. Like it's, it's a little bit hard to kind of kick off with those kind of experimental stuff um, if you're applying for an architecture job. So I would maybe think about um, removing, it's beautiful work, don't get me wrong, but it's just, my interest was not peaked until this project. And then this project, we're starting to see, okay, there's a concept with, you know, we're getting into some kind of skyscraper here. Uh, I like the concept. There's a bit of um, diagram to back it up. Um, I can see what tools uh, she's using. And then page 32, 33, where she's kind of creating this solar analysis. And then she's going through how she came to this form in the building. This is really great to see. She's utilizing these tools to create some kind of informed design, right? So that's that's really interesting to see. Um, yeah, I, I could delve into it and criticize it a little bit more, but I'm I'm kind of, you know, this gets me more excited than the the images beforehand. And then the second product, Inform Fluidity. Again, this is this is form finding, and and you know, it's a little bit more of an experimental end but it's being applied to a, an object, a product. And I think yeah. there's something tactile in this. There's something I can sink my teeth into. And this is, you know, this is a good, a good level of computation that she's using to do this. I would love to see her have printed it in, in uh, to go on and, and print these. And, you know, I'm sure you can sell these. I think it's a beautiful design. It's a great use of, of computational tools. Um, Overall, I think in this portfolio, I mean, uh, and there's always this debate about art, sculpture, and architecture. And in, in, in this portfolio, you can sort of see the fact that, you know, you can play around with geometries, you can play around with forms, you can create fantastical forms. Uh, while looking through this portfolio, I sort of question then, would I call it architecture? 
if if uh, because a huge part of any architectural project is in my mind it's user as well like things have mm-hmm. to be a, because architectural project that's how it started i know it has evolved much more since what architecture started as but i think there's there's an element of usability that comes into as well which i start seeing in the third project fourth project obviously the the vases that you're talking about are and because and those look really good because those are things that we can use like that yeah. like just they are shown but also you could see how they would be they could actually be fabricated by 3d printing or something like that which which is a great extension of the design process i mean as, as architects we're in the spectrum of you're an artist at one end and an engineer at the other and we're in the spectrum it's sort of in the middle i guess right and you have architects that are way more pragmatic and uh, architects that are way more artistic right so yeah. you can fit wherever you want your personality yeah, the spectrum is you. huge now yeah and and uh, it's great to see everybody um like in this portfolio all these portfolios it's great to see everyone's got an authentic voice and got their own thing that's what's really important and you know we'll see this with loads of new practices um but yeah specifically i think for this portfolio i think she's she's kind of doing a good job showing that span but um it, in this the third and fourth project is where it kind of piques my interest because she's she's doing that whilst also tackling something real um, yeah. like a product here's what's really interesting is she's the first person to actually show a snippet of a script that she's used and straight away I can get a grasp of her level of grasshopper, right? She's she's obviously got a, a decent level of grasshopper. She's doing some kind of complicated um, data management here. This portfolio in general, I think um, there's some real good parts. I definitely think about reorganizing it. Um, I think there's a little bit more maturity to come through in terms of getting a bit more information on the pages um, as opposed to... Uh, I'm blanking on the name here, uh, Khaled, I think it was. Um, he's gone with a lot of information on the pages. This one has gone sometimes almost too little information on the pages. And, you know, um, I'm struggling to uh, get some of the story for some of them. But um, yeah, I, but think it's also, exactly- I think also it would also speak to sort of uh, what you want to apply to as well. Like with her portfolio, I think she wants to apply in positions that are purely based on on research of form. I mean, just researching different things that could be used because I've heard like bigger firms have these research teams that keep experimenting with different things and then they sort of evolve into projects if they do. But their main like job is about, uh, you know, finding new forms, researching new stuff, researching new materials, maybe. Also, like, does she want to go into the specialist role and try and develop that computational side? Because there's there's applications here in the architecture world, there's applications in the product world. Um, yeah, I'd definitely be interested to kind of understand where she wants to go with it. It's a good, it's a good portfolio. I think there's just um, some more evolution to come from it, but it's a great definitely moving in the direct in the right direction she's got a great skill set she's developing already so yeah i think she's got a bright a bright career ahead of her let's go to our last portfolio of the day jeffrey's jeffrey's portfolio yes the description says uh this portfolio is my parametric lesson assignment but then in in it itself he says, uh, this is my for- first portfolio. So I'm, I'm actually not sure if this is a portfolio or a, a, a like the result of an assignment at university that, he, that he's kind of like turned into a little project portfolio. Yeah. So he's based it completely on one project, um, which is, again, a gamble. Uh, you, you do want to show a range of skill sets and often showing a range of projects helps you do that. Of course, if you've worked, like Khaled uh, is, is a good example. He's done this mega project. He could probably get away with doing a, it on one project. Or if you're an architect and you've spent a few years working on one project from concept to like completion, yeah, you're probably going to do a deep dive and that's going to be really interesting. 
So um, it's, it's a bit of a gamble to just do uh, focus on one project, but of course the beauty of it is you get to delve into the details a little bit, which Jeffrey does uh, get into it. Yeah. This was one of my main reasons of, of choosing this project is uh, like once you realize the whole thing is whole portfolio is just about one single project. And then I want to see like how that sort of impacts somebody when they're looking at a portfolio, because now you can look at a portfolio in much more detail and you can explain things to you much better. That's the, uh, the pros of, of doing it. And it, it, it can be really nice straight off the bat. I mean, the cover is a little bit, there's a lot going on there. Uh, with this, which is kind of like it's, it's images of the pavilion itself. It's a little bit busy. We jump into the portfolio and we've got like kind of nice. He's showing us a bit, a glimpse of what's to come. Yeah. Um, he doesn't have a CV. He has this kind of bio thing, uh, a little bit about himself. Hello, my name. I'm a student. This is one of my courseworks. Uh, after I look through this, I don't know what I'm reviewing here. Is this a first year, second year? He's just finished. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I think he, this is a this is more of an assignment based portfolio. Yeah. Uh, so I don't have a CV, so it's a little hard to gauge where he's coming in at. I feel like this is a you know a, a bit more of a a startup portfolio. This is po possibly uh, he said this is the first one he's done. So. This is better than the first one I've ever done in my True. first year. Like my so, first portfolio I made after second year, which was shouldn't ever see the light of day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so fair dues. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff in here. I think there's just a lot of maturity to come and he, he's evolving as a, as an architect, you know, the, the ideas page make fractal uh, again, it's, it's basic. I, I, want to understand a little bit more of where this is going but i get the gist of it like the framework is here is just he's evolving as an architect you know as we get into the veins page and the concept of it there's a lot going on here i got for some reason he's taken the veins on his on his arm as like a a driving concept and he's taken the shapes on his hand as these modular components and then he's experimenting with them, copying, pasting, mirroring them to create these initial 2D concept images. That's a great way to start things. Um, I, again, I'd be interested in how he's doing this. I'm assuming this is CAD or, you know, he's just kind of Photoshopping or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's complex. It's actually, you know, the result is kind of interesting. He's created this, this artwork with uh, these images. So yeah. I like the sequence. He's, he's moving in the right direction. And then he goes from taking this concept into these modules, what I would call, he calls them variable, variable one, variable two, variable three. And then he's talking about the sequence of, um, you know, rotating, duplicating or copying, mirroring uh, this process to, you know, you start with one and then you'll end up with this pavilion, right? So he's, He's thinking computationally without even knowing it maybe or, and getting into computational tools. He's thinking about the logic of his script, even though I don't think he's, he's just doing this manually. That's interesting yeah. to see. It kind of makes me think that he should get into computational tools because he's already thinking in that way, right? And he's, he's created three options and he's kind of rated them um, ideas, experimental efficiency efficient so again he's coming up with a logic he's developing it and then he's creating some criteria to market right he's thinking very computationally and, and logically right but he's probably just doing this this manually and then um you know he's made a selection of of one particular one and then we get into the site the location i think would be a bit more interesting to learn a bit more about the site. Is the site going to play into this as well? Or is, are we just dropping this object into this arbitrary site? And, you know, he, he goes through this concept, the butterfly effect. He's thinking about how this wooden box is going to be constructed. Again, this is very, very basic, but at an early stage, this is good to see. He's thinking about materiality, why pine? Um, you know, he's, he's creating a little fabrication drawing of his, of his wooden box. Great to see. 
and then, but still at, at this early stage, he's thinking about the entire process. We're now into details and he's really thinking about how will these things connect together. Uh, he's getting into details and then we get into visualization and how does this thing actually look? And I think he was using Luminon, right? Did I, did I remember that? But again, like there's just a bit of, I think he's still Seems evolving. He did, yeah. yeah, like the, the human eye and the bird's eye, like the text is massive. Uh, it's, it's almost a little bit distracting. It's just that, that evolution of, of like graphical style laying out things. For, uh, to start off in Luminon, this is not bad. Like we've got some vegetation and I think my advice would just be keep going and, and uh, you know, there's some really great things in here and, and keep pushing. I, he ended it with a quote, which is kind of interesting from, from Renzo Piano. I was just trying to, yeah, architects spend an entire life uh, with this unreasonable idea you can fight against gravity. I thought that was, that was kind of interesting, especially in like in his image, I see some like, there's some black boxes holding up <laughs> the, the pavilion. So he's, he's definitely put gravity to the test there. But I think, you know, again, this is hard to judge because I'm not quite sure if this is a full portfolio, a project portfolio. Is this a first year, second year, third year? But uh, I would say keep moving in, in this direction. There's a lot of good little things I'm seeing in here, um, but there's still a lot of growing to do in terms of becoming better at drawing, visualization, keep working on those skill sets and it will come. Definitely start looking into computational tools in Grassland because you're already thinking computationally without using the tools, which is really interesting to see. All right. Um, so I think that we covered five portfolios. This is officially the longest running uh, yeah. episode that we've done. We've done two hours, 40 minutes uh, till now. I think I'll edit it down for an hour for you guys, but know that we've been doing it for two hours and 40 minutes. A lot of projects when they're released and in their description, it says, you know, so-and-so sustainable and stuff like that. And the first question that comes to my mind, is this the most sustainable option or was this the most beautiful sustainable option that you went with? The bandwidth that we communicate at is growing. Um, so even myself is like, how do, how do I get my own ideas out there? Is it through through social media, through images, through animations, VR, all these kinds of things. So before we finish now, since I, I want to make this a recurring thing for every episode, Ollie, have you seen Harry Potter? Yeah, of course, man. Have I seen Harry Potter? Yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, I'm British. I, you, you can't not yeah. see Harry Potter during Christmas. It's I have like, heard like, I, I, I used to see a lot of British YouTubers and when they used to speak about Harry Potter, they were like, when they were younger, all the children in London, at least like up, tried to be a part of the movie because they were taking so many extras <laughs> in. <laughs> like everybody used to just line up. It's weird. Harry Potter reminds me of Christmas because it's just like, Harry Potter and before Harry Potter it was Lord of the Rings because they always release them at Christmas and you just think uh, James Bond is always played at, at Christmas. Um, so yeah, Harry Potter, I even like uh, you're kind of, you hear that sound and I think of Christmas. I'm like, I'm in Christmas world. It's Viviano, cool. if you're watching, please go and watch Harry Potter movies. What are you doing? I'm going to build up the pressure till that guy watches all the movies. <laughs> so thank you so much, Oli. I think those were some amazing five portfolios. Again, I would reiterate the fact that one, one thing I would just like to talk about is again, what Mariana talked about is again, when we are looking at portfolios, it's not like we are at a higher stage looking down at portfolios and sort of uh, looking through them. It's, it's discussions among equals. So it's two people looking at portfolios thinking of, I mean, telling their thoughts about those portfolios. And again, in those portfolios, they were also chosen because of the varied things that they had. Uh, so that is why thank you for, thank you to everybody who sort of sent in their portfolios. They, these specifically were chosen because we want to discuss different, different aspects within those portfolios. So yeah, thank you so much, Oli, for taking out the time. I know we've gone beyond what I had sort of. <laughs> no worries. Done. I hope it I hope it's um, I hope it's useful for people. I'd love to also reiterate your point about Mariana. I think she put that across really well. Um, and I'd also welcome anyone who's had your portfolio reviewed today. 
reach out to me on Instagram or LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to have a chat with you and uh, also help you out if um, and to try and connect you with people to get a job. So um, do feel free to reach out. And uh, yeah, I hope, I hope you found it useful. Perfect. All right. So that was it for our episode today. I would just like to uh, say once again, obviously there'll be more episodes coming forward. So if you want to send in your portfolio for the next episode, you can send it at BA portfolio review at the rate gmail.com. I uh, will not reveal who the next guest is as yet. That will be revealed with time. But if you any which way want to send it for the next episode, you can just send it across. Again, uh, you can help out on this channel through Patreon. You can become a patron. And through that, you can get access to bonus videos, to exclusive videos. Even the two-hour, 40-minute conversation that we had here, obviously part of it will go to YouTube. And the rest would go to Patreon where you can get you know, what uh, more discussions that we did about those portfolios. So you can watch those things there as well. So do think about supporting me on Patreon. And that was it. Thank you so much, Oli. Thank you so much for having me. Really enjoyed it. That is it. I will see you guys very soon with more such content. Bye-bye.